en mi país es un nombre aquí es una broma pero no, it's, it's really funny because the same thing happens every time I, I walk down the street and I think I have a lot of friends and they're not my friends and then when I finally get to talk to someone they ask me ¿Cómo te llamas? and I say Hola, and they say, sí, pero ¿cómo te llamas? And after a while of being true that, nobody forgets my name, which is the good thing. Uh, I read an article that completely blew me away a couple of years ago. It was about uh, happiness and countries. So some guys spent a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of questions to find out which is the happiest country in the world. Which citizens are the happiest? And the result of this study was that Spain and Spaniards were the happiest by far, and then it was nothing, 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 and then some other guys came, Thailand, I think, and very far down was the United States of America, <laughs> Japan, Sweden, and other countries. So what kind of freaked me out was that we're trying to export the models that makes us less happy, <laughs> and not the models that makes us more happy. Uh, a lot of people like to come to Spain, the way of life, a lot of other good things here. But what you're very bad at, having all these good things, is exporting your own companies to other countries. It's about going international. That's my passion, that's what I do. And I started out back in, my first international company was 97. Uh, we were uh, a little bit smaller than Amazon, but by far the largest European e-commerce site, selling music and home entertainment. And I remember having discussions with Amazon whether we would merge or not, but we were betting on the fact that we could outgrow them in Europe. So we walked away proud from the table. Uh, I wonder what sort of the capital loss per step was, but <laughs> anyway. So since I, since I was the youngest of the team and I got the worst job, and it was called Outside Sweden, and since we were only in Sweden it was like a non-job, but I got a credit card and an airline ticket and I could pick any country in the world and go to and start up the company. Uh, a year later, outside Sweden was, of course, the bulk of the business. We're 9 million people in Sweden. And I've been going around from country to country every day uh, with a credit card and absolutely no clue, trying to hire people, make partnerships, understand local legislation, talk to record companies and whatever we needed to do. I realized the only consolidation in this, this, this terrible job was that there were 20 to 40 guys on each plane back in 99 and 98, having exactly the same job as I did. No clue, I'm from a company called eBay, cool, what do you do? Oh, it's kind of an auction model, okay, let's have a beer, you know. <laughs> did you have a tough day? <laughs> yeah, so did I, nobody understands this. They don't even have internet, they have something called Minitel here in France, yeah, it sucks. <laughs> so, so I was going around doing this. Stop insulting the French. <laughs> anyway. 15 million years, isn't that wrong? In, 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 anyway, anyway. Uh, this went on for a while and I also had a pop star friend and if you ever have the chance to travel with a pop star you should really do it as, as much as you can because as opposed to coming to a country as an entrepreneur where you sit at Regis Business Center and you know nobody wants to talk to you when you come with a pop star it's champagne and models and red carpets and things <laughs> so I started thinking of a company that would treat companies like rock stars and just as record companies has been able to pick an artist anywhere in the world and get him or her in every record store or pick a movie anywhere in the world and get it on each cinema they've created an ecosystem for growth so that's what Result is doing we're creating an ecosystem for helping other companies grow and we've understood that we won't come up with the best ideas so that's why I try to rub shoulders with guys like Martin or Tariq or others that come up with ideas so what are the learnings? For eight years we've been doing this and we've been part of, of I think it's almost 110 internationalization projects during this time. We have local offices in the key markets so that they know the local market and we find out who's really good in one market and then try to roll it out. So what are some key learnings? Well, first of all, you have to, go, you have to start going international to be international. That's where most companies fail. Most companies that are successful never go international. The ratio in Spain, I would think, is 95% local successful companies, 5% that goes international. That's the first, first problem. Second problem... Now he starts insulting Spanish companies. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll finish by insulting you, Lloyd, you know that. <laughs> so I don't want to kick people lying down, so... Uh, anyway, uh, the, sec the second thing is to make small, inappropriate steps in other markets than your own. 
So if you've been the greatest entrepreneur for 10 years, you spend money, all your friendships, everything is put online, and finally you become successful. And then you're going to Italy, and you want to do that with somebody half-time, and you expect the same results in that market. And very seldom that happens. So usually companies are successful in their home market, and they're quite disappointed at what happens at the other markets. And when you start looking into why, it's because they've done completely different things to become successful. So, key learning, move the conditions for your local success to the other market, otherwise you won't be successful in the other market. That's another thing. Third thing is don't let chance, or who you happen to be in school with, be the route to internationalization. Very, very often when somebody goes international, they say, well, I knew a Finnish guy from school, let's talk to him. Or, somebody came up to me at the expo and he said he knows everything about Russia, let's talk to him. Pick your partners. Key to success. Pick your partners. Uh, the other thing you can do, depending on where you are, is you can use what we call the time machine. And the time machine is the fact that in certain markets, things did not exist that have been going on quite successfully in other markets for a while. An example of this, uh, in Norway, SMS was going crazy. And in Spain, SMS, sorry, sorry uh, SMS, and, but also um, ringtones, logos, these kinds of, kind of business models. So we saw that, and an investor came to us and said, pick a market in the world, and I'll give you some money, create a company, and make it market leader. So we scanned the world, and we found Spain, and we were part of creating Movilisto. So Movilisto came from knowing it would work to pay a lot for TV advertising, to market ringtones and logos and other things, and a team here in Spain with Gonzalo de la Sierra, who's a genius in the local market, just knowing it would work and not having to have the fears of normal entrepreneurships. So what you can do is you can copy models very successfully. Uh, a third thing that can be done is to utilize the fact that we're Europeans, so a lot of the US companies, it's, if you look at uh, internationalization, it depends where you come from. So for instance, in America, companies start thinking about the international after $50 million in sales in the home market. If you go to Israel, they say, domestic sales, that's a distraction. <laughs> in Sweden, we're 9 million people. And ever since the Vikings, we thought of, you know, we've been going places trying to take money and women and things back home. <laughs> <laughs> and, and during the, the dot-com boom, we started calling ourselves <laughs> Silicon Valhalla. <laughs> and, and, and guys like Jonas that you'll hear later, he started a company that went from him to... Three and a half billion dollars in IT consulting in like two and a half years. Most of the money came from our ventures giving him money. No, but, but, so, so we were massively going international because we had such a small home market. Uh, and it's important to understand uh, where you are as a market. Will your home market be enough for you and then you will sell to the Americans? Or would you like to go elsewhere? And then there are two theories. One that we call the proximity theory. And the proximity theory, and when we talked about the internationalization, we tried to challenge the entrepreneurs about thinking through certain things. Proximity theory says, go to a country close to your own. If I speak to a Brazilian company, they say, I want to go to Argentina. A Portuguese company want to go to Spain. A Ukraine company want to go to Russia. So proximity, you understand, and it's close, and so forth. That might be a very good strategy. But it might also be a very stupid strategy, because if it costs as much to go to Helsinki from Stockholm as it costs to go to Beijing from Stockholm, then you might be better off going to China. That's what we call the spaceman theory. You're driving around in your spaceship, you come to Earth, where should you land, and which market has the most potential for you? Doing that exercise is a very good exercise. Another very uh, important thing is how uh, you go international. There are different models. Do you do, do it as a joint venture, with all the hazards of a joint venture? Or do you go, out, go in greenfield and spend the money yourself? Do you license the model, and so forth? And my advice is that if the model is really strong, and if you truly believe in it, and if you've been very successful somewhere, go in alone in the other markets. It's so tempting to say, okay, Russia, I don't want to go to Russia. Here's 90% of Russia, you do whatever you want, I want 10%. And if they're super successful, that's a very... That's a very expensive internationalization model. So, in conclusion, internationalization starts by you guys trying. That's the most important thing. Secondly, it's a lot of fun to go international. Look at this group. This group are growing companies like Crazy International. 
And thirdly, what we have right now with the web and the potential, uh, before you had to have a lot of marketing money, you had to have a lot of uh, brand manuals and all these kind of bullshit. You had to try to convince people with marketing that your product was a little bit better than it really is. Usually interrupting their movie they wanted to look at, at television. Now you can do it in a very much better way, like the guys at Skype have done excellently by just proving they can create uh, a, an experience that people love. An example of that, we were part of creating the world's largest poker guide. Sitting in Stockholm and New York, 40 guys after a while, just search engine optimizing in local language. Gathering all the poker players of the world to what become like a CNN for poker players without even traveling outside the office. So, uh, from now, uh, it's much easier than ever before to go international, and yet I hope you take on a challenge. Thank you, you very much. Sex too, um, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much.